Welcome to The Wonders of Watercolour, where this week I'll be showing you how to paint a cupcake. So let's talk about materials. I'm using paints from A Gallo, but please use what you have. It's lemon yellow, buff titanium, arancione, olive green deep, harbour blue, alizarin crimson hue, and chromite brown. Now you can use whichever colours that you have within your own set. I'm using my number eight and my number two brushes and I may just throw a little bit of gouache in for good measure. I provide you with a traceable so you can trace down your drawing if you prefer to do it that way just by tracing it down this way and all the materials that I'm going to be using today I will link in the description box underneath this video in case I've gone a little bit too quickly here. You can see that I've swatched up the colours to give myself a better idea of the kind of colour palette that I'm going to be using. So to start with I'm mixing a really watery mix of lemon yellow that's lots of water and I'm applying this with my number eight brush all over the cupcake apart from the raspberry in the middle. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm mixing another colour of chromite brown and buff titanium with a tiny bit of arancione. Now these colours are from A Gallo and they are a little bit on the spendy side, but don't worry, use whichever colours that you have that are nearest to these. And if you get stuck with your colour matching, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you so that you can uh, join in with this tutorial. You can see that I've dropped in the mixture of chromite brown with buff titanium to that damp paint. This is kind of like a wet in wet if you like, although we, we do have a colour underneath it. But you can see that by adding this pigment to the damp paint, it just blurs it naturally. The other colour that you can see is the same but with a tiny bit of arancione. Arancione is kind of like a really bright, vibrant yellow-orange colour and it's just given that um, a little bit of a a different tone there. You could use something like a yellow ochre instead. Now because I was really impatient that actually bled into the cream colour at the top so I'm just using my brush to lift off some of that colour. So everything's dry at this point and because we use layers with watercolour we can now start to build them up to create a little bit more shape and form. You can see that I'm using the mixture of the buff titanium, arancione and the chromite brown on the top part of the cupcake paper and I'm going to be using the other mix of buff titanium and chromite brown for the bottom. I want this, pa this paper case to have a really kind of natural papery look so we're just dropping in a tiny bit of that darker colour into that damp paint. This method is known as charging and it just gives that natural blur and it makes the colours merge together without them looking unnatural and, have, and having a hard edge. You can see how I'm dropping it in here. This is with my just, just with my number eight brush and letting it do its thing. There's no stress here. We learn to paint as you paint channel. So it just makes everything super easy. And it means that what you, whatever your level, you can still join in with our tutorials here. You don't have to be an expert in painting. We're not into photorealism. We're just all about having fun, getting paint onto the paper and enjoying ourselves. And if this is something that appeals to you, you may want to consider subscribing to my channel because we do upload every single Tuesday. And if you, if you hit that little bell on the side there, you'll be notified every time we upload new content. Okay, so carrying on, you can see I've applied that color to the bottom there. That's the darker color with the chromite brown and just letting it blurred into that paper by adding some water to help merge it into the existing wash. Chromite brown is a granulating colour which means that it separates on the paper when it's dry. This is brilliant for this kind of painting because I did want the paper to have a kind of natural look. Everything's dry and I felt like I needed to use a tiny bit of gouache to add a bit of detail. Now this is really um, optional, you don't have to do this, but the colours I've, I've chosen here are white mixed with a tiny bit of yellow ochre just to add some detail as shown. Like I said, this is optional, and I guess technically speaking, this would be a mixed media paint painting because I'm using um, a bit of gouache as well as watercolor, but hey, no judgment here, <laughs> let's just carry on. So we've got um, the whiter color on the bottom there with a tiny bit of the yellow ochre, and yellow ochre with more white at the top. My number two brush here, just to add some detail, any fine brush that you have. And now I'm taking the brush strokes in the opposite direction to create a kind of pattern on the paper. You could just leave it blank as it is. Um, it's entirely up to you, but like I said, I had the gouache in, 
um, in my kit so I thought it'd be really cool to add a bit of detail. Um, on the reference photo that I'm working from it had some pattern and um, I just thought it looked really nice. And if you want to have access to the reference photograph and outline, really easy, you can just stay until the end of the video, pause it and screenshot it that way. Now that everything's dry, I'm mixing a puddle of um, Alisa in Crimson Hue, or do you call it Alisa in Crimson? I'll call it Ali Crimson for short, so that way I'm not stumbling over my words. And I'm just mixing this to a mid-consistency that's a little bit of water, and I'm applying it all over that raspberry straight flat colour like this with my number 8 brush. As that colour is drying, I'm dropping in a thicker mix of the same colour, this time using my number 2 brush, and you can see how I'm dropping it in wet and wet to create a little bit of detail as I work through. Notice that natural blur with that damp paint, and it's a really great way of adding a bit of detail without being too fussy. So I'm mixing olive green with a tiny bit of harbour blue and I'm taking the watery mix of the harbour blue colour to the top part of the kind of papery leaves on the Cape Gooseberry and the same on the other side. Now we have got um, a more in-depth tutorial on the Cape Gooseberry if you would like to try painting that and I will link it on the top of your screen right now. It is a botanical painting tutorial and if botanical painting is something that interests you we do have a Patreon which focuses on botanical painting and um, how you can level up your painting skills. So let's just take a look at what you get. Are you an aspiring artist looking to take your skills to the next level? Or perhaps you're looking for fresh inspiration? Then you may want to consider joining our Patreon. Our Patreon tutorials have much more in-depth instructions and are a much slower pace and depending on the membership level you choose, you can have personalised feedback from me and video calls. Unlike our YouTube tutorials, our Patreon art classes focus on really learning the art of botanical painting and I will guide you step by step through the technique and skills you will need to learn and improve your botanical art. All of our Patreon tutorials are exclusive to my patrons and you won't find them on YouTube. So why not join up to our Patreon and start creating botanical art you can be truly proud of. None of our Patreon tutorials are on YouTube, so if you want to check it out, then I will link it in the description box underneath this video. So this is Arancioni, and I'm using my number two brush just to add a little bit of, um, I think there was some dried fruit on the cupcake, um, just some squiggles there. And you saw me there just painting a circle on the fruit of the Cape Gooseberry, and that's going to form the little highlight. And I'm just using the Arancioni colour to work around that uh, fruit part, as you can see me doing here. This is my number two brush, uh, just working around that highlight to make it look nice and natural. And I'm just dropping in a tiny bit of the Ali Crimson on the base there to give it a bit of texture, to make it look a little bit brighter. The raspberry is dry, so I'm just adding a tiny bit of detail, just creating some random circles to create the, I think they're called droplets, aren't they, on the, um, on the raspberry there. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. I've just added a tiny bit of harbour blue to that mix just to darken it and give it a little bit more um, contrast and I'm working this on the bottom part of the raspberry as you can see. Now if I am going too fast for you please forgive me but you can slow down this video and have it going at a slower pace but I did want to make sure that I fitted everything into this tutorial for you and you can slow it down if you want to. So here we go back to mixing some more colours, um, a little bit of the harbour blue with the uh, chromat brown water on the paper like this and we're going to be dropping in that color this is just to create a little bit of shadow and to make the cupcake look like it's actually um, sitting on a table rather than floating around as it was so because this is a granulating color it will settle into the paper and give it a kind of nice woody effect but you can use any brown that you have you haven't got to use these colors um, just spreading that paint around with a bit of water and dropping in a little bit more of that colour right at the base of the cupcake. If you are enjoying this video, could I please ask you to hit that like button. It's a way of letting YouTube know that you're enjoying my content and it, that does mean that YouTube will push it out to more people and I'd really appreciate your support. You can see how I'm just pushing that paint around and letting it sink into the paper and you can see that granulation there that I was talking about earlier on. I've mixed up some chromite brown, sorry, I've mixed up a little bit of harbour blue with the olive green deep 
and I'm just adding this with my number two brush. Notice how fine that line is, just adding some detail to the kind of papery part of the Cape Gooseberry. These brushes, um, if you'd like some more information on them, I will link it in the description box underneath the video so that you can click on that and it'll tell you a little bit more about them. So I'm just using a tiny bit of the Arancioni mixed in with that Harbour Blue mix to create a darker value and I'm just blending it in. I do have my own way of blending and um, I do explain that in more detail on the video that's on the top of your screen now. So you can click through to that if you'd like to know my application process to make it super easy that, so that you can join in with all of the tutorials here on YouTube. And talking about all our tutorials here on YouTube, if you did want to have access to all our photographs and references, if you head over to our Facebook group, um, you can join us there and you can have access to all of them and trace down whichever ones you want to. Uh, we are a private group, um, a fantastic group that's really well managed by my amazing team um, who I don't say thank you to enough. So thank you everybody for all your help. We would love you to join us there. Um, so just take a look at us and you can post up your finished paintings as well as get some feedback from me and our other incredible members of our group and my amazing team. So do take a look and check us out. With this darker mix here, I'm just adding to a little bit of detail to the base of the raspberry. This is um, uh, the Ali Crimson with a tiny bit of Harbour Blue, just to create a sort of purpley colour to make it stand out a little bit. Uh, you can see I'm just adding a bit of the Ali Crimson to the underside there and blending it through just to give it a bit more contrast. So I'm outlining the raspberry with that darker mix with my number two brush just to make it stand out a little bit. We don't want it to be too detailed, but I did want to add a, a little bit of contrast around the base. So you can see by outlining it like this, it really makes it stand out from that cream. And just carry on adding some detail as I work through. You can see how I'm just picking up that paint and taking it over some of the droplets really watered down paint just to take out some of that pale colour. I'm outlining the papery sections of the plant with a little bit more detail there. That's a mixture of Harbour Blue with Olive Green Deep. And just randomly putting a few bits of detail in here and there as I work through. I'm just adding a tiny bit of that Arancioni watered down to the bottom part here, just to make it a little bit more uniform and chromite brown on the base. Now that it's dry, I just felt that it needed a little bit more uh, contour, a little bit more shading. So we're just adding that to the bottom and then blending it out as usual. So we're almost at the end. So if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss new uploads. So let's just take a moment to check out the finished painting. Here it is, let me know what you think.